Jagun Jagun in Yoruba, which means the warrior in English. Yes, this movie recap. If you are new, don't forget to subscribe. This recap does not substitute the movie. Disclaimer. This recap does not substitute the movie. Thank you. Let's dive deep into the story. The movie Jagun Jagun begins as Jigon and his men went and attacked the upper Oniketo and they requested for his crown. The king refused to and the vice crown because it's an abomination in Yoruba land. It only happens when the king is dead. And the king is still alive, so why will he and the vice crown? So he refused. They killed this prince, which made him very furious, and took his princess and almost killed her. Then the king told them where the crown was and asked his slave to take them to where the crown is. They carried the crown on their way about to leave the palace. Then the savior came in, which happened to be Ogundiji. Ogundiji then caught the hand of Jigon, which led to his instant death. And then that was how he saved Oba Oneketo. Ogundiji was said to be a very powerful man. He's a great warrior. He held a war school where he trained soldiers or army for war mainly. People Influential people in society hire him to clean up their sheets and fight their battles for them. They clear communities of and the right of everything as long as their clients request for. So that's like how they carry out and run. The neighboring village send their youth, especially they dedicate a particular youth to only the war school so they could be fortified and ready for any war. So whoever they dedicated for Ogundiji War School could come to their aid in case there's war. And Ogundiji warriors have always been known to be strong and undefeatable in the society. Even their appearance alone is very terrifying to whoever they appear to. And they have always conquered war. No war has ever conquered them. Hoba Alarinka and his brother Modede caused into a fight because his brother was trying to take was belonged to him after taking the throne away from him. So he threatened his brother that he's not let he's not going to let him have his way this time. They are taking the way the throne from him. He's not going to let him take this other thing from him. So his brother, the king, then went to plead Ogundiji to come to his aid that his brother threatened to kill him, that he should send some of his warrior to attack his brother. So he sent out his warrior to fight for the king. And his brother also brought some of his warriors. Ogunjimi could not allow his warriors to be defeated, so he called out to Agemo to go on behalf of him and come to the aid of his warriors. Agemo went straight to the wall and freeze every other person and started killing and he cleared out everyone. And that's how they recorded the victory. At the end of the day, the three senior warriors, he punished them and said there will not be food for them for seven days, no water and a- anything for them to eat at all. It was time for the warriors to eat, and they said that two persons will share one corn meal and one bean bun. Both each other then disagreed that even one was not enough for them before, that why would they even tell them to be sharing among themselves one? That what kind of things that they're not eating that they should return the food back to Keaton. Keaton then came and said she will make sure she gets Blotija punished and is going to face the consequences for challenging her authority in the palace and she will make sure she puts him in his own place. They beat up Blotija mercilessly but refused. He said he ate cheating so much which made her more angry and she told them to flog him the more. All his back end up tearing. Keaton then asked one of her maidens to take some orange for him to take. Then later in the evening, requested for his presence and he went and met Keaton. Keaton explained that the person that brings corn to the palace refused to bring corn that very day. That, that was why she requested that he shared the food that is not as if she's wicked or mean to anybody. And after then, she apologized to him and they both cleared their references. Keaton then offered to be his friend. He was scared to accept, so he kept on staring. Agbeloba and Laiwu came to Ajitori house. They brought some foodstuffs so they could catch her attention. 
She refused to come out to them until her mom arrived. Her mom went in and called her out. She came out and said, I'm Beloba and his friend. She called them all sorts of names and she ended up chasing them away. They went away and took away their stuff as well. Her mother refused to let them go with the stuff, but they said since her daughter did not want them, that why would they leave their foodstuffs and waste their foodstuffs since she wasn't ready to have them? They took away their stuffs. Henry Funto, Ogunjimi wife, came in and apologized on behalf of the three warriors that misbehaved that her husband should please pardon them. And he felt in his spirit mind that somebody had feed the three of them, which happened to be and he told them to eat the food and when they finish eating they should ensure they kill him ha ah, they felt sad for him he asked them to set up the fire and ensure that they burned down when he, when he was killed and they sent the body to his village and his village felt betrayed that they sent him to go and learn war at Ogunjimi's place and he sent back his body just because he offended him and he killed him. So they decided to revenge on him. When he happened to be Ajitoni's fiance, and when she saw that he was born to death, she wept so bitterly and she was so ready to revenge on Ogunjimi. So the king's Ogunjimi had helped to take over the throne are deliberating on how they are going to celebrate him during this festival and how they are ready to make the party very elaborate and bring all sorts of things to celebrate with him. They all agreed to show up for him in a big way. Ajitoni then came to seek for spiritual revenge for the death of her fiancé and she said that they should please just help her to kill his wife too so he could feel some pain and know what she was going to. They came after Aaron Fronto and started shooting her multiple times. Butija then came to her rescue and called the name of the wood they are using because he believes so much in wood and his lineage and wood are in a covenant. So whatever he commands the wood to do, they obey and fall at his order. Ogundi did then send Bogumi to war. But his wife said it's not possible for him to go and attack our people, that it is very wrong, that why will he do such a thing? He requested for his favor and answer to intercede on her behalf. Ogundiji felt so offended with this his attitude that why will he disobey his order in anything new? And he promised to treat his fuck up. He sent him out of his presence. Oromobo then requested from her husband to let them run away so that Ogundiji could not have access to their life anymore. And her husband said that there's nowhere they want to go to, that if he wants to come after them, he's definitely going to come after them. Ogundiji then refused to see Bogumi. Bogumi then celebrated Botija. Immediately, Botija came out of the chamber of Ogundiji and said he was going to give him little power so that he's going to feel like a complete man. Rogumi then asked about his bargain story and he said that it was the war that came to their village that killed his father that was, that was what made him want to be a warrior so he could fight the people that came after his father back that that was the main reason why he ended up in this war school and he said that's a very good thing that's going to give him enough jam that's going to help him to be a good and great warrior like him that is one of the greatest warriors in the whole community that is going to help him and give him the chance that he has to. Ogunde Mijans have his festival and everybody came to celebrate him. As the others have agreed, they showed up for him in a big way. It was a grand event. It was full of very, very influential people in the society. So they came and celebrated him and rejoiced with him. There was kind of a ritual for him that was performed on him and his warriors also displayed their skills in all different ways. There was also some kind of game among the warriors that no one could really win except Botija. And the moment Botija won, it became a battle in the mind of Ogun Tiji. And 
Ogundiji then asks that Potija and Pogumi have a physical battle among themselves, that they should wrestle among themselves and they should ensure one kill the other, that whoever kills each other is going to get a promotion. It was a very tough battle because out of this time, Botija and Bogumi were like father and son, and Bogumi already saw Botija as his own son, so he felt like it was like he was about to enjoy his blood. And before that time, they already entered into a covenant where he pleaded not to allow any even come near him. So they felt it is a very difficult condition. At the end, Bogumi was killed by Botija. It was very painful because this was not an easy decision for him to take. He felt he had killed his stepfather or his new father and it was very painful. People celebrated him as he killed him. That was the stage one and test one of his promotion. So the test two was given to him by the king again. They was going to sleep in the coffee for seven days without eating or when my father then started making just of her husband that imagine how they just killed him as she was not powerful. Blah blah blah. She felt very bitter about this. Then I accused her father that it's not even her father that's meant to say this kind of thing. That after all the help that he showed towards her father, Bogumi then felt that this task was more difficult. That why would he sleep in a coffee for seven days without drinking water or eating? He felt very bad about this and he was a bit scared. Then Kiton encouraged him to go ahead that he was going to succeed. Botinja then went ahead and slept in the coffee for seven days. At the fourth day, Kito could no longer take it, so it, she came and checked upon him and he said that he was healed and healthy, which made Ubuntiji very furious that how could he say he's fine when he's sleeping in the coffee that he was going to ensure that it gets more difficult for him. That was the second task. They end up throwing him into the water and he started calling the God of Wood and the God of Wood didn't respond on them. Until the point that it was almost getting drunk. Then he came to his aid and he came back to Ogundiji and people were hailing him left and right, which made Ogundiji very angry and gave him a very difficult task for the third one so he could be good. He sent him to war for the third task himself and three other warriors. At the point of the war, three of them got stabbed instantly and he was left alone. He overcame the war and again Ugundiji sent Agemu. With the help of the God of Wool, Botija was able to overcome Agemu. Then he opened the face of Agemu. Only to discover that Agemu was Kito. He felt he has done himself and he weeps so bitterly. He then went home with a corpse and seek for vengeance and explained everything to his wife, Erefonto. Erefonto refused to believe and asked her husband. Ogundiji, Ogundiji then said, what if it's true, there's nothing they can do to him. And in front of then reminded him that they both agreed not to give birth to any children and they used her own for him to have enough power that as if forgotten and Ogundiji betrayed her by having a son. That what is that? Ogundiji didn't feel most and he declared a war among his warriors. Some supported him and some supported Botija and they started fighting. His wife entered Erefonto and brought out something to destroy his power, which later led to his death and it was so painful. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.